Hey yo, this is Dash, and I want to introduce you to someone. Well, some of you guys might know who this is. This, this is a historic moment. Hey yo, this is Dash. Get ready. All right, all right. So I am out at the side of the house. We're on the side of the house. And we have, let me tell you what this is. First and foremost, this is what you'd call an ugly drum, okay? This ugly drum is none other then the number one drum. This is the drum that started it all. And she's, she, he, it is in pretty rough shape because it's been sitting. This drum has been sitting in the background in the garage for three and a half or four years now. And she's a little worse for wear, but I haven't decided if I'm going to try to strip the paint down, re-sand it, and refinish it. I don't, I mean, that's that patina, you have to work at that patina. I think she's earned that patina. But I do want to do some updates because I learned a lot after making this very first drum. One of those things being this, and I'll show you, I'll let you in on a little secret. Actually, I'm just gonna walk you around the drum and I'm, I'm like super excited about this because there have been a lot of you guys who have been asking me to do a video cooking and using a drum to show you why you use an ugly drum smoker or what the purpose or what the point of having an ugly drum smoker is. And it's almost time. We're going to get into it. First and foremost, the first thing you notice, this is not a Weber dome lid. You know why it's not a Weber dome lid? Weber dome lids or Weber grills cost like $200. This was a $50 grill that I got from Sears. And I got it on sale because I had some of those points. So I bought a grill. Yes, I only use the top. And I do use the, the charcoal grate in the inside. We'll talk about that later. And I also use one of the grill grates, or at least I do now. In the beginning, I bought two of those Weber grates there, the one that had the foldable, you know, flap on the side. But we're gonna walk through this grill. So you take a 55 gallon drum, you cut the top off. I actually prefer to use the drums or start with, hold on one second. All right, so now there's less spots on the screen. I actually prefer to start with a drum that is sealed on both ends as opposed to one of the drums that's open and has a lid that sits down. I just find that the the top is typically in better shape because it held or has a better shape because it's not open and won't be potentially be bowed now this grill has this little fancy handle there where it can stick on the top of the grill all right no need to put it on the ground now let's start the actual let's start from the outside the outside i have this thermometer here this is just a basic thermometer from Lowe's or Home Depot. Actually, it's Home Depot where I got this. And this thermometer is just under the top grate. Now, I didn't talk about it in my, in my drums when I set them up. I have two grates, a top level grate and a second level grate. So that bolt there is where the second level is. And this bolt here is where the first level is. Now the way I have it set up, you have, I think it's three and a half or four inches down from the, from the top. And then because you have the dome, you have plenty of room to put something in here. Now from here to here, I believe it was like six and a half or seven inches. Or actually, I think on the later drums, what I did was, I measured whatever this distance and then this distance and split the two and put the grate like an inch or so above that. 
I really, I don't remember. I kind of just did it by feel. Now, this drum predates my welding days, where actually, when I got this part of the drum assembled, I hadn't started welding yet. Because of that, all of the, or a good amount of the bolts and things like that, that are in here, like this one, it was not originally, let's focus camera, like this nut here was not originally welded. What ended up happening is I got the welder probably halfway through when I built this and I tried to weld that and I burnt through it and then ended up having to put a plate in there and that's why that's there. So you see the nut, it's just, it was a piece of all thread that I cut to size and put a, a bolt on one end and, and that was it. Same thing, reason why these are screws down here with the washer. Now, <laughs> I've come a long way since I built this drum. <laughs> like, I, I can see the progress and the progression. Now, one of the other things on this one that you don't find on any of the other drums that I've built since is the ring. Or the way this ring is mounted. The way this ring is mounted is sheet metal screws. Okay, every about six inches or so, there's a sheet metal screw to hold this band on. This band is what allows you to put a, a 22 and a half inch dome lid on it. I've been told you can find 55 gallon drums that are slightly have a smaller diameter, a slightly smaller diameter, and you can use a dome on it without having to, to put this band on. But I, I haven't found one. All right, so we take the number one cooking grate out and you can see again this is the top level down there is the lower level the second level and here we have the water pan you see stuff in there because I just cooked on this the other day uh, yes I took some pictures so here are some pictures of the drum in use No, I did not do a video. But here's that cooking grate I was telling you about, or grill grate I was telling you about, that I used from the grill. And I use it on top of my charcoal basket that you can see down here. And let me get it up a little bit one-handed. So there's my charcoal basket. Now, in the beginning when I was doing these, I just kind of made that an oval. I have since gone to making it a square and uh, I feel like it works out a little better. But I just welded some standoffs on the bottom and the basket, and it's pretty, pretty basic on a charcoal grate. You put your, your charcoal and your wood down in the basket, dump a charcoal chimney full of charcoal on top, get it all lit, put that grate on, put your water pan on top of that, and then you can use your, your lower level and your upper level rack if necessary. Now, as far as intakes, with this grill, unfortunately, I thought that a three quarter inch, I always wanna call this a check valve, but it's a ball valve. I always thought that a three quarter inch check valve, ball valve, I just did it again, would be sufficient. I found that that is not the case. So every iteration of the grill since I put them with a one inch ball valve as opposed to this three quarter inch because in the beginning I was having trouble getting this up to temperature. Now, in order to combat me having trouble getting this, this drum up to temperature, I cut holes in it. So there is a hole down in the back of the drum there. And there's also a hole down on the side of the drum here. Now what I did is that hole there, I believe that hole is an inch and a quarter. And as you saw, I just used something basic, aluminum foil, to stop the hole up. Because if there's too much air, you'll have too much heat. And if I'm trying to keep the temperature down, let's say that 250 degrees, which this will do amazingly for hours on end without issue, all you have to do is choke off the intake or the, the intakes. You see a lot of times nowadays um, the, the, the drums come with two or three pipes that are pretty much this high and you kind of have a little flap. Actually, Robert made me some 
that uh, he told me to do something with him. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Robert, if you're watching and if it's okay with you, I might adapt them to try to use with this because I might actually cook on it a lot more frequently. That being said, uh, it'll be kind of like what's newer and nicer that's available nowadays versus what I was able to do and put together four years ago, five years ago actually when I made this drum. That is like the overview, the tour of the drum. If you guys have any questions about it, please feel free to let me know. I will be doing some cooks on this thing. Just let me know, I guess here's the, here's the thing. What do you guys wanna see cooked in it first? I'm telling you now, I'm not cooking a turkey on it. I know it's almost Thanksgiving. I'm not cooking a turkey on it because everybody and their mother is doing turkeys right now. So let's, let's do some other stuff. I'm thinking maybe we'll do a, a brisket because I would, I really, <laughs> I, the, I did a brisket on this the other day and it turned out phenomenal. I might do another brisket on it sooner or later. But you guys, let me know how you feel. Again, please welcome the number one drum back to the channel. And I know it's been a long time since you've seen this drum. And I promise we're gonna be cooking on it. Thank you guys as always for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Don't forget to turn the notification bell on so you can be notified whenever one of my videos goes live. Speaking of live, every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. I go live and do a live stream for about two hours. The first hour we talk about something barbecue and or barbecue business related. The second hour we shoot the breeze, take a couple drinks or have a couple drinks and talk amongst friends. You're more than welcome to join us and uh, we would love to have you on a live stream if you have nothing else better to do or even if you do and you wanna hang out, please join us. Last but not least, thanks again as always for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, bye, baby. <laughs>